Hey, welcome to Road Testament. Today we have our brand new set in effect. I've got JF Musial here today. We're talking about a bunch of things having to do with the, uh, the performance car industry and the auto industry in general. Mm -hmm. And uh, JF, good to see I you. I like this you're, set. You're very nicely backlit. Um, thank you. I was going to say, and With I the am apartments too. apartments back there for them to see what we're doing. Yeah, yeah, well, there's no, I don't see any uh, naked chicks today. Not today. Um, so we don't have to worry about that. <laughs> um, being I like, I like I this mean. environment of sitting next to each other. This is this much is more comfortable. This is kind of cool, and I'm much more comfortable. And, you know, we're going to run this until, we, you know, we're not going to. There are no cuts We're not going to cut for things like what I just did, where I just kind of started uh, this is, you know, that this kind is the of thing. uncut of road testament now. Right, this is uncut. What am I, no, so like, again, like I went to the wrong camera. <laughs> we don't care. It's Road Testament. Okay. Damn it. So what are we talking about today, JF? I don't know. You tell me. Well, let's go. I literally just got here five minutes ago. So I, I know, know you did. You were, you're a little late. That's why we're, we're a little bit uh, frazzled today. Uh, don't forget, at Drive on Twitter. Uh, what is it? Uh, Drive TV. How, how many times have I said this? Drive TV on Facebook. On Facebook. Yep. And... Uh, DriveShirts.com if you want to drive shirt. Yes, which we'll get shipping to internationally now. Yes, that is very cool. Yes, yeah. people don't know that because we kind of didn't want to say it, but they are shipping internationally. Why didn't now. we want to say it? Because that's a lot of work from our end. We because we have to do a lot of mailing, yes. you know, and our our we have to lick the packages, <laughs> not because of the glue, just because we like to lick the packages. Is it like fr the back of a frog? Do you get high off the? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's frog skin. <laughs> You've been reading the uh, Anarchist Cookbook again. <laughs> Okay. So anyway, so what are we talking about today? Corvette C7. That's a good topic. Right. So we don't know a whole lot other mm -hmm. than the speculation on what it's going to look like, but we do know what the engine is going to be. Cool. From, from I know Jeep. they've been teasing some of the, the, the details of a car that really doesn't matter. So. Uh. Yeah, they're doing the, the little tease detail thing. Yeah. So ahead of the a wheel, launch. a badge. Hey, well, you know, the, a fender. <laughs> um, but the really interesting stuff if you're an engine nerd, is that they are sticking with the pushrod V8. And um, I know our international uh, viewers really think that American engineers are a bunch of pussies for doing that. Um, and I have, a, I have a theory, and I actually have a case for Corvette and a theory about this, right? So in Germany, Mm -hmm. The engineering is kind of the show mm -hmm. over there, right? So, so they throw a lot at making kind of shock and awe mm -hmm. engineering. In America, it's all about the accountants. So it's yeah. the accountants that get revered as much as the German uh, Yes, well, it, I think it becomes, it, it becomes a situation of the engineers know what they want to do. They, they, they understand how to make better things. They're good engineers, by exactly. the way. Exactly. And that's, I, I that's think what a lot of people don't know, but they're very good exactly. engineers. I think there are engineers within Ford, Chrysler, and, and GM who are very good at what they do, but then it comes down to a situation of talking to the guys above them and the, the accountants above them. No. Right. No. Well, I use the analogy. <laughs> all right, so this is the analogy I use. They're like the, the flight engineers on Apollo 13, right? It's like, all right, here's a length of tubing. Here's a down jacket. <laughs> here's a cup of coffee, and uh, here's a flare gun. Now, give me 450 horsepower. And they say, that's not possible, but okay, we'll do it because... And they sit in the room with, yeah. their, with their short sleeve button-down shirts yeah. and their, their crappy ties, and they, or not, that, that's not what they look like now, but that's what it looked like in, in 1971 or whatever. <laughs> um, and they make it work, and they yeah. make it happen within the boundaries that they're given. So the Pushrod V8, uh, the new LT1 Pushrod uh, 6.2 liter V8 yeah. is going to be in the uh, the it's very it's close in displacement to the uh, the previous LS3, which which says a lot because that also is kind of how they've designed the C7. It's not quite an entirely right. new car. It's not yeah. quite an entirely new chassis. Yeah. The C7 is only an incremental improvement over the C6. Right. And and it kind of translates to their to their power platform. You know, and, and what I know that they're going to be focusing a lot of time on from the spy shots is the interior. So when you get into the car, oh my God, this is a whole new car to any customer. But then when you really dig into the details, especially as we, we now know these details of the push rod yeah. uh, it, V8, same crap. So what? Well, yeah. and, and you know, and, and Corvette takes a lot of heat for having leaf springs. But like, let's face it, it's not, they're not leaf springs in a, like in a Jeep. They're transverse leaf True. springs. And actually, even the German engineers will will concede that it's actually a very clever packaging decision that saves weight yes. and uh, it, it actually causes less roll 
so they can use a smaller bar yeah. in the back. So it actually is a very good, clever decision within the boundaries of what they were working with. Yeah. The interesting thing about the, um, the new V8 is it's finally direct injection. Yeah. So, you know, they can up the compression. Mm -hmm. um, the, the interesting thing that, the other interesting thing that GM talked about is that there are up to 50% more torque within the 2,000 to 5,000 RPM really? range. Yes, which means that we might actually see a sub four second base Corvette to zero, from zero to 60. That is impressive. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. When you think about it, it's 450 horsepower, yeah. under four seconds to 60, yeah. if that's the case. Well, and I think they'll get the, the traction control system and everything sorted out so that they can get that power to the ground too because that, that much torque low ends. Well, could, could spell for disaster for a lot of people who don't know how to drive. Well, true, but you know that, that the torque profile on the, uh, on the new engine is very similar to the torque profile in that range of the ZR1's engine, the, uh, the LFA, uh, well, uh, what is it? LF I get LFA, the Cadillac versus, yes. it's the supercharged 6.2 liter. Sorry. Yeah, LFA yeah. versus LF, LSX LS, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, you know, direct injection obviously benefits absolutely in um, in, well, in efficiency also fuel, fuel economy and, so. and, and you know when you especially have a muscle car of that sort and that kind of demographic that's certainly a selling point. Right. You know, you you need to have direct injection at this point to to even get anywhere close to the to the cafe standards. Yeah, well, on top and on top of that, the interesting thing is they're using something that they've been using in the other similar engines that they've had is the uh, what is it active fuel cut off, you know, where they, where they, the cylinder deactivation. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So you can actually, you'll, you'll run at low loads on um, four cylinders. Yeah. You know, and that, that's worked in their trucks and it's worked in some of their, their other cars. The marketing department in my head is saying, okay, if this is the information they're releasing months out before the car gets revealed, because it's Detroit, right? We're going to see it for the first time? I think so. Um, I think there could be some very cool things on the way. Yeah. You know, they're not giving away everything at this point. I, I, I have high hopes for the C7. Yeah. I want it to be good. You know, I, I think that as we progress in, in two years, we'll see a new Mustang as well. And I think that these, this muscle car category is going to stray away from the retroness. Mm -hmm. It's a cool stuff. Yeah. Um, let's hope that there's much well, more in the Well, yeah. I mean, we would love to see a little bit more uh, higher, you know, like a, a little bit sexier engineering from them. Yeah. But let's face it, the, the Pushrod V8 is also lighter than BMW's 4.4 liter. Good point. With all the cams and the fussy, you know, this and that. And it's simpler. And it's simpler. And so that they can sell it down the line exactly. to drag racers. Don't forget, Americans love the drag race. So they can That's sell that crate point. engine. That's yeah. a very it's, valid It's a point. simpler and motor. And then it on. runs into maintenance, yeah. reducing maintenance right. costs. It's yeah. actually, when you think about it, it's probably a very clever method of actually, you know, because it, it, it's, it's easier to produce, yeah. easier to maintain, and then you go into the whole crate motor business. Yeah, well, that's a big, that's gonna, these big people part. These people are going to throw this motor into a lot of different, different things, so yeah. it makes sense. So they're not going to get, like, bragging rights from the, the Germans are still going to snicker at them, but yeah. um, well, I think it's going to be pretty I capable. I still want to bash accountants, though. So We could bash them. We should just do it. Well, I, I mean, I, 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 what good is it doing? I mean, obviously, like, they're a giant <laughs> company, and the accountants yes. have a lot. Of, all right, well, I think we should move on. We've beaten the Corvette to death. Yes. I'm, I just can't wait to see it. Okay. Because I, um, I think it's going to be cool. Uh, I think there are a lot of, um, a lot of things that can be said about, the, said about the Corvette that are very, very positive. You know, at the beginning of this conversation, the motor was, I was a little, a little hesitant, hesitant. There it is. Oh, the hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's the motor. Yeah, my I was, you know, and that doesn't really show that much. Well, you could see, you know, you could see the uh, direct injection, the direct injection um, pump back there somewhere. You know, there's your push rod. Um, there's your, you know, your your cam profile. I, you know, honest, honestly, it's not. Um, it is what it is, yeah. right? It's a very efficient engine. And they can yeah. get good, decent gas mileage out of it and uh, screw it. Whatever. That's what it is. Next topic. Okay, next topic. Um, we are going to... Oh, oh the VW Phaeton returns. Oh, really? Yeah. Retur oh, re go. Returning to the U.S.? Or returning just to the U.S. They, so, didn't, they didn't learn from their first mistakes, I guess. Well, here was the thing, right? The, the problem was selling a $100,000 Volkswagen, yeah. which means car the, to people. Exactly. Uh, the people's car. Um, the car that anyone can have. Right. But you have to spend the $100,000 on this special one. And this is why it only lasted 
one well, year in the U.S. And also, one year. Right, and also here, it's, all, it's not that it's not a great car, because no, it is, and, it's and a fantastic It looks great, car. and I've been to the factory, I, I love the way it's produced, I think it's a beautiful thing. The but. Dresden Transparent Factory is, is awesome. state-of-the-art stuff. Awesome. I mean, we're I wanna, talking about the Germans. I, you, know, yeah. you can't mess with the Germans when yeah. it comes to that kind of mechanical engineering, yeah. assembly, like, just sexy. We should do just a driven sexy. episode. I have to it's, the, it's definitely the sexiest Factory, uh, factory in, the in the world. Yeah. Wood floors. Moving wood floors. Moving wood floors. <laughs> right, exactly. It's oh, a, we should a, do a driven episode there. We, we, we definitely have should. to. And the you know, cool stuff from there also, like the walls, the, the glass walls outside yeah. emit a sound that tells Keep the birds. bird that keeps birds, birds away. away. Like birds go, oh, this isn't my territory. Like they, they actually <laughs> speak in bird language. It's like they say to birds, yeah, no, 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 this is, this is off out. limits. And no, they're like, no. oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know. Um, for that car. For this car, and but now they've taken, uh, you know, the uh, Bentley was using it for a while yeah. to make the, uh, the silver, silver Spur, I want to say. Flying Spur. Flying Spur. Well, I'm getting my... Silver Spur. That's, I'm, I'm confusing Rolls Royce and... Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Phaeton's back. Yes. What does it mean for Volkswagen? Um, in the U.S. market or in general? Because this, this car did sell very well outside the U.S. market. Right. Because don't forget, we've got Audi. Yeah. It's competing with Audi. It's well, it sold well outside the U.S. market because, you know, most of those other markets have looked past the Volkswagen bug as the only thing Volkswagen is known for. Now, coming to the U.S., I still think there must be a reason internally that they're saying it's going to work now. Maybe they, they know stuff. Maybe they're going to price it differently. Maybe they keep in mind. This is the flagship, much like the A8 or the S Class or the 7 Series. So maybe they figured out a way that they can price this more like a 5 Series. I think you're right. So it's exactly what they did with the Passat and the and they in moved some the, extent to the Jetta, right? Where they've, they've dropped the costs of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've they've making made made them a little bit less premium quality. Yes. I, I mean, touch and feel kind of stuff. Yes. Um, and they dropped the price. Yeah. And they made them more competitive with. Car and they make them in America now, so they, yeah. they get the, the yeah, which is the, the sort of dubious currency connection now, which isn't as they're not getting the benefit as well, much as they maybe, used to have. Maybe that's an element of this too. Maybe but it's possible. Yeah, because at this point, I think it's good to, to mention that these car companies are actually it's they're playing very corporate or very high level games of currency trading and and and, and building things to reflect where they think the currency is going to go. Yeah. three to five years down the road, which is why, as you said, the Passat is much cheaper than it. it's much it's closer to a Jetta now than it ever was before right right this though um, you know I'm 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 worrisome about how the US market will adhere to buying. oh you're worrisome I'm yeah. no, just kidding. sorry I'm <laughs> <laughs> no you're talking about like that you don't think Americans are still not gonna buy I a still Volkswagen don't think they're for gonna get it. I still don't think they're gonna get a, a high-end Volkswagen I think the Touareg was the only thing that got away with it the V10 Touareg was the only thing that got away with it because it was so badass yeah, yeah. this isn't badass factor I don't know what the new one looks I like I think it well all right I, I I disagree I think it has enormous badass factor it has you know, like like Ronin badass factor. If but the, Ronin like, is aluminum S eight. I know, I know, driving I know. over you know. But somehow, French. yeah. But somehow the Volkswagen just having the the VW badge on it is more more down and dirty to me. But 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 the thing is that they're still going to use the same the platform that they share with with uh, the Audi A eight and yeah. the Panamera. So they. It's they do have their platform stuff down. They're, they're, the the modular platforms that they're mm -hmm. they're using are it's it's probably going to be a lot easier for them to to cut the price by decontenting a little bit maybe. I don't know if they're yeah. going to do that. Is it still going to be that much of a badass if it's decontented? I don't know. I still think the Phaeton is the most badass car in its segment. Would you buy one? Yep. Really. Yes, especially now that the they've depreciated to like a third of their value. Well, you see, you're not you're not helping yourself. No, if because I you're, had you're the money, you're thinking about buying a, a D3 platform Phaeton. If I had the money, I would buy one new. Sure, absolutely, no doubt. Over a five series. Yep. Over. A, no, over a seven series. Over a yeah, What's absolutely in that over seven over series. No, crack. <laughs> other, other, but notwithstanding the crack in my coffee. Um, no, I I think I would I I'm the I'm the buyer. There aren't probably a lot of Luxury buyers like me, who who don't really care about the the brand okay. name, right. I just think the the car is badass. Okay. I would buy a hundred thousand dollar Volkswagen in a minute, but obviously I'm not in the <coughs> majority. 
There you go. Not, I have nothing else to say about this. So let's move on to a car that we actually do care about a lot more. Ah, 918. Yeah, Porsche 918 Spider. One million dollars. You got to do it with the... Discuss. Uh, what was the Dr. Evil? I just didn't want to go there because I thought it was a little cliche. Okay, right. no, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You can, you I, I, go with that? uh, that's a lot of money for this car. A lot of money. But don't you get a 911 Turbo with that? Or for a million dollars? No, I, well, I'm just saying that. I remember that there you was You get a, two cup cars. <laughs> no, no. What I'm saying is that um, the, first per, the first buyers, the first people who have put deposits down on this car actually, I want to say they got 911 Turbos to hold them over. Oh, oh, oh yeah, they the got special free ones. Yeah, the special they, they edition 911 price. Turbos. I forgot about with that. With the 918 badging and whatnot. Yes. I don't know if you had to pay for that in addition, if it was just an, a special edition that you, were, you had the luxury of buying if you wanted to hold you over. For a million bucks, you should get a, a, like a, a 911 to drive one, uh, during the yeah, day. Just, uh, just an $80,000 car with turbos on it, of course. Indeed. <laughs> The thing about the 918, though, is it's an enormously complex undertaking. Yes, absolutely. So Concord moment. Concord moment. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, yes, a million dollars for an early adopter of the kinds of, you know, packaging and electronic. All right, so let's, let's run it down. 580 horsepower, 4.6 liter V8, V8 yeah. right? Yeah. Hooked to 215 horsepower worth of electric motors. Batteries up front. Right. Yeah. So 795 horsepower. Yeah. Ba um, batteries up front, you said? Yes. So 50-50 weight distribution. It's very good, yeah. Um, it could run on electric only, yep. uh, hybrid mode, and yep. just gas, yep. gasoline powered. So fairly badass. And it's running the same carbon tub as what we saw in the Carrera GT. And right. actually, in fact, the car before it, the GT1. Right. Right. Yeah. Not that it's really light though so it's still with all that it's still, it's still about 3700 pounds yeah between 37 and 3800 pounds yes so um i will say that i had the luxury of, of shooting um a few of the prototypes uh. in nevada and uh i f it's a very cool car it, it, look, seeing no this doubt. thing fly by one way on its v8 powered by v8 sounds great and then coming back to reverse on electric power yeah such a cool well, such and a if cool you've sensation. seen right, if you've seen Chris yeah. Harris's ride along that yeah. he did uh, with this, he loved it too. I mean, it's he, you can't be a car nerd and not love what they did with this. Yeah. So no doubt, and right? it's and it's seventy to seventy five miles per gallon, is what they're aiming for. That's significant. So that's so insane. how many years do you have of driving? You have to, to pay down the money. But that's dollars. the thing. It's I obviously has, has nothing, nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with the fact that it's the first supercar that's going to be able to achieve that kind of mileage. But I'm an American. I think practically but, about accounting. But I'm an the, accountant. the people who are buying these cars are going to look at it and say, I was one of the first to uh, to to adopt yeah. the future technology supercars. Of course. Michael Maurer, who's the chief designer of Porsche said that they needed to build this. He did an interview. He, they needed to build this to prove to the world that sports cars could exist in the new world. Yeah. They could exist in the world of, um, they could exist in the world of green. Of 53 yeah. mile per, per, exactly. per gallon This mandates. is proof of it. Yeah, I mean, look, if this thing works and if this technology starts trickling down to other Porsches, it, it could be a very significant Absolutely. moment. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Take, 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 for example, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to the Italians. Look at the Ferrari Enzo, mm -hmm. Enzo Ferrari, right? When that came out in 2001, 2002, 2003, it was up here. By the end of the decade, we had the 458, yeah. which was putting down just as fast lap times yeah. as the Enzo. Within True. 10 years, the technology had trickled down in yeah. terms of not only, I'm not just saying technology, but also the, the way at which the engineers packaged the car, the, the, the production methods. All yeah. those things tri did trickle down. And now you have a middle-of-the-range Ferrari that's just as good as the top-of-the-end hypercar from 10 years ago. Right. And so this is where we wish that, let's say, GM had a moonshot project like this. Yes. Where where that technology would trickle down to the Corvette rather than kind of roiling technologies that kind of are, mm -hmm. you know, incremental in nature. You've got like a little bit of direct mm -hmm. injection. You've got a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And it's a very kind of practical application of stuff. I would love 
if GM just said, you know what, screw everybody. Mm -hmm. We're going to do a moonshot car, and all that stuff is going to trickle down into another car. Don't forget, like, America still doesn't have a luxury car to mm -hmm. compete with the Panamera. Mm -hmm. So we're, we just decided that we're going we're gonna to just forget about all this stuff. That, and, mm -hmm. But that's where we were talking about the German engineers. That's where Germans, mm -hmm. the German car makers are they really see technology and, and in engineering as a showcase mm -hmm. of the vehicles. I, and, and the thing to remember is that we Americans, there are American engineers that are capable of this. Yeah. It has nothing to do and with... They all go to the same schools ultimately, <laughs> right? They all have the same programs. They all and bust the, their asses in the same way. So they Something can like it. this would be possible from an American car company because the, edu the, the, the knowledge is there. I think that what's not there is the experience. We don't have American motorsports program that's enhanced. Well, it's a leadership. Like it's exactly. a leadership problem. We don't have well, and the Germans don't have problems with the the, the counting and the red tape that the American car companies have. I think that so at the very base of it, the engineers, engineers from around the world could produce this if they were given the right resources. Right. So well, if you look at Toyota, I don't know about every country. Well, oh, sorry, way. sorry. The major markets. I mean, I think the. I mean, the don't forget the Brits, the Americans, and the Germans were always you know, tops in engineering. I mean, yes. look at the American defense industry. Let's not forget industry. the Japanese with Toyota. And the Japanese, or I forget. Toyota right. has the resources beyond a leaf to do something this good. But, but you really want to see the corporate sector exactly. make those exactly. investments you in you, this stuff. And that, and that trickles down from people like Winterkorn. Right. You right. know, the top, of, the top of Volkswagen, you know, the VW group, pushing for stuff like this. Yeah. Anyway, we're, Sorry, we're, we're going off we're, topic. We're belaboring. Yeah. Um, anyway, million dollars would you pay for it? And don't forget, wait a minute, here's the other thing. Magnesium wheels? Ah. 38 grand? I don't even know where that is on the periodic table. So I don't know. Uh, yeah, M something? Yeah. Um, <laughs> special liquid metal paint, uh, 61 grand? Liquid paint. To add on to this? That's cool. Liquid paint. <laughs> I don't know what that <laughs> a is. A liquid metal. It's like, uh, what is there, like, uh, like mercury in it? Oh, where you okay. press it and it... Mercury! No, I'm just You're joking. adding mercury? <laughs> Mer it's a mercury. You actually... Well, there is that paint you can rub that changes colors. Have you I, ever seen that? Yeah, or the chameleon paint, yeah. like on uh, the, those, the uh, uh, Corvette from, uh, what was it, Miami Vice? Oh. Um, or, the, yeah, the, sorry, the Corvette Ferrari. <laughs> Next. Um, also, a quick charger. Okay. Like, what is it, the four-hour charger is yeah. uh, another... Uh, 26 grand. Awesome. So don't forget, a million bucks and then really, so just think of a $100,000 car and lop a couple of zeros or yeah. off of, you know, so like six grand for, it's like buying a Porsche. It's like buying a, a, a 911. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Great I, you, analogy right there, Mike. Oh, that was an important. Great analogy. Yeah, I, so you got my joke. What I, what I mean is it's like buying a 911 yes, just up for 100 one, grand, you knock off the zeros, zeros. And, and they charge the same amount. Yeah. Uh, I think it's still a very cool car. So, w one last thing to talk about today. Yeah. Um, it was a good episode. We've done quite well. Yeah, but see, take a look at this. Uh, hey, Lamborghini, there's your buddy. Right? So, Ken Imhoff yeah. built his own Lamborghini. It took him 17 years in his basement building every, he built every part of this. He built the bucks that he did the, the, uh, uh, the body panels on. He, uh, he built the drivetrain. He built the space frame chassis himself, all the details, and, and you know, you can't really tell from this, but we've seen this up close. The details are really, really good, right? He would, but it took him 17 years to build this car, on and off, right? So some years he would lose interest or he would get You're forgetting frustrated. forgetting the most important part, he built it in his basement. In his basement, yeah. right. Yeah. Now he wants to sell it. Yeah. So what do you think, I mean, can, could somebody, blood, sweat, and tears for 17 years, um, watching, you know, his, his kids kind of grew up while he was down in the basement, Yeah. right? But he built this thing. I mean, and it's really good. And, and all right, granted it doesn't have a V12, but it has a very good, it has a very cool um, a 351 Cleveland Bushrod <coughs> uh, <laughs> Ford uh, V8. Um, but it's basically a Pantera drivetrain, but it's a worked motor. And the motor's insane. It's got the, you know, it's got like... Uh, the 48 IDA, mm -hmm. IDA Webers in the back and the giant velocity stacks. It's really a badass car. But now he wants to sell it. How, does, how do you sell it? How, would you be able to sell a car that took you 17 years I think years it, becomes, it comes down to the story. Yeah. Um, if you were to build a replica, um, you take a 
MR2 and you make it into a... So I know you have... Sorry. I'm, I'm not <laughs> Are you saying like... I'm not bashing no, the no, But you mean like put the Ferrari 360 exactly, body yeah. on, a, on so an MR2? If you were to do something like that and it was just, I just want a Ferrari and what... Uh, there's no story there. Yeah. This is a story. I think the fact that that car was built inside of a house in a basement for 17 years. And you can see and this he is where he had to dig it out. He had to knock the wall down to get it out of his basement, which by the way, he told me he knew he was going to have to do that. And he, he measured and uh, made sure that he could get the car out. <laughs> so he, it wasn't like, Hey, I've got built the car. Now I can't get it out. No, he actually knew that he was going to have to get it out. So he figured that out ahead of time, but go ahead. If the story is good enough, I think that you could sell it. And I think that this is, a, this is one of those stories where, um, it is possible. No, I mean, for him to let it go. Oh, could you sell it? Could, I mean, yes, he could sell. I think some people, I think collectors would want to buy it. There's a uh, story behind it. It's a great provenance. But would you be able to sell a car it took you 17 years to build? I mean, that's something that I think no, people I don't are think arguing I would about. Be able to. So I did the piece for Jalopnik, yeah. and people are arguing. And I, I, it's, I'm amazed to see it, how many people are taking the practical line and saying, if he had only wait, you know, waited and saved up for 17 years, he could have just yeah. bought a real one. Yeah, I don't think so. And I just, I just don't believe that people really believe that, mm -hmm. that building something doesn't have value. Like building your own thing, yeah. creating something where there was nothing before has as little value well, as that's, people that's are his, saying That's his has. life story. I that, know. That's one, of his, that's one of his, the pinnacle moments of his life right. is that. And I think that, you know, the first time that saw daylight must have been in a very emotional experience. Oh, yeah. I couldn't even imagine. So I mean, th at this moment, basically, would, he took this picture. I would not be able to. I, I mean, the be first able to. time you see the paint in the sunlight, exactly. like, actually, like, and you go, oh, my God, I did this. And this isn't, you know, the, and, and the thing is, it's not like 17 years it took him to build a kit car. This is totally from scratch. He mm -hmm. built every Everything. part of this. Everything. You know, minus the wheels and tires. Minus right? the wheels and tires, yeah. engine block, and yeah. all that stuff. Engine yeah. stuff, obviously, the Webers, yeah. he didn't build. But um, it's an amazing car. And if you want to buy it, you can go to his website. It's kiengineering.com. It's cool. And you could buy it if you want it. And he'll make, just make him an offer. He's, you know, um, and take a look at it first because it is really, 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 really good looking. And it, it, um, it's solid, too. It's not a crappy car. It's got a great tubular space frame. That he built. It's and the interior looks pretty nice. It's kind of Spartan, but it looks very race car. Cool. Um, and he and and he, you know, he he just all the parts fit really well. He just did a really nice job. Very good job. And yeah. hopefully we'll see a Jalopnik episode on this soon. Yes, yes, we will um, soon. Cool. We'll let you know. Cool. And that's Road Testament. Yes, for this first got it right. brand new set. Look at this. Yeah. We're awesome. Got my coffee. I'm pushing up the carpet a little bit. I feel really at Drive on Twitter, uh, Drive TV on Facebook, and uh, DriveShirts.com. If you want your shirt, you can get one. Oh, we'll be doing like Super Friends. Oh wait. <laughs>